Hi, I'm Simon Bradbury, designer at Firefly Studios. And I'm here to finally introduce the latest in the Stronghold series. We're going to the Far East with Stronghold Warlords. That period in the Far East will allow us to experiment with some really interesting and advanced siege equipment. It also allows us to bring various troops from Imperial China, the Shogunate of Japan, the hordes of the Khans, and initially the jungle troops as we reunite Vietnam. We'll be returning to a more sim-focused gameplay in Stronghold Warlords as we explore the economies of the Far East. As well as Japanese castles and fortified Chinese cities, we'll be having new traps and a whole host of new features. But the feature we're going to talk about today is perhaps the biggest new feature, a new core mechanic that sits atop the basic gameplay. The Warlord system. This is the Warlord system, which is the cool and exciting new feature in Stronghold Warlords. In Stronghold Warlords, you, you build, attack, fight, run your economy, just like you would do in a, in, a, in a normal Stronghold game. However, we've added a new layer on top of it, a new grand strategy layer, if you like, called the Warlord system. You hit spacebar and quickly you go into the Warlord screen. The Warlord's map is laid out in front of you, and here you can make some strategic decisions. Let me set one up. The Warlord system basically is an extension of the estate system. With the Warlord system, you get a lot more control over what you get your estates or your Warlords to do. Each Warlord in Stronghold, and here we have three types, has a unique set of abilities, a unique set of commands you can give it, and a unique set of passive buffs that he will give you for owning them. So, for example, they can produce goods, unique goods. Uh, they can build castles, big or small. They can bring out sieging or defending armies. You can use them to attack other warlords. There's a whole range of things, too many to go into now, that they can do. And each warlord has a unique archetype, a unique set of skills. You also get to upgrade your warlords to make them stronger over time. You upgrade your Warlords to give them stronger benefits by using a new resource in the game called Diplomacy Points. You get Diplomacy Points on the main map by building government buildings, emissaries and things like this. You choose the Warlord you want to upgrade or the Warlord you need to give a new command to and that slowly turns possibly the tide of the battle in your favour. So if we have a look at this map, it's quite a simple map. We're over here, the player, We've got an enemy AI over here, and we've got five warlords, three horse warlords, a turtle and a pig. Now we're on this side of the river. We have access, pretty safe access to this horse and this horse. The, the enemy AI has a horse and a pig and a turtle. The enemy AI is probably gonna go after the pig because he is the most useful in winning the game. However, we are gonna go for the turtle warlord across the river. It'll give us a beachhead and because he's a turtle warlord and great at building castles, we can use him to protect us. Whilst then later, we start to get the horse warlords, ramp up our production, and hopefully mount an attack on the AI over here. How the game pans out is completely different every time you play it. Most of the time you'll be fighting and the warlords will be helping out, either militarily or economically. Sometimes, however, I can envisage a scenario where you could even not do any fighting at all, but just use the Warlords to do the fighting for you. So how you play is really up to you. Do you do all the fighting or do you let the Warlords do the fighting for you? 